This week's 1044 is brought to you by Chevron Dello 600 ADF Ultra Low Ash Diesel Engine Oil. It's time to kick some ash. The journey from concept to production is long and specific. How exactly does an engine oil get its formulation? Hey everybody, welcome to the 1044, a weekly webisode from the editors here at CCJ. I'm Jason Cannon and my co-host on the other side, as always, is Matt Cole. Engine oil is a fairly significant part of the engine's overall health. While there are different types, conventionals and synthetics, and there's different blends and there's different weights, the basis of the oil itself doesn't often change. The current generation of trucks has already been through one engine oil formulation change in 2016 when PC-11 was fully licensed and became the FA-4 and CK-4 engine oils that fleets by today. But it underwent a development process that took years. Five plus years to be exact. And we're in the early stages of another formulation change, this time to PC-12. Now, over five years sounds like a long time, but Kevin Carabell, Regional Technical Services Specialist with Chevron, says that's not the case at all. To the additive company, that's actually not a lot of time. And, and there's several reasons for that. One is that they may be in the process of developing new additive components. So they may be developing new dispersants or new detergents or new friction modifiers. And if all goes well, it takes about five years to develop a new component. So they have to start that. They have to anticipate what PC-12 is going to require. And they needed to have started that several years ago and then start the development of new components to have them far enough along so that those can be used in the testing that's done to develop the new formulations. So a lot of things run in parallel. The additive company will be developing their new chemistry for the targets for, for PC-12, but they'll also be, at the same time, development of new engine tests. So the Engine tests that are in the current category were carried forward from CJ4. So they've lived through two categories of life, basically, by the time we get to first license date for PC-12. That's about 20 years. Those engine tests today are starting to run out of parts, and they're vintage of 2004, 2005, so they aren't really relevant to today's hardware. So there's going to need to be some new engine test development. So that needs to run in parallel. And then at the same time, the driver for this new category is a couple of things. One, it's the California Air Resources Board is looking to extend the full useful life of emissions equipment. And the EPA is looking to significantly reduce NOx and particulate emissions from diesel trucks. At the same time that they're needing to develop these engine tests, the engine companies are also having to develop new engine solutions that are going to meet the 2027 targets. And for them, that's right in front of them. That's very short timing. So a lot of things have to happen in five years and things have to get far enough along in the next three years for the engine oil formulation work to start. So it may seem like a lot of time, but it's actually, it's pretty compressed. For loop companies to be able to make the claims that are listed on the label, there are a lot of tests that have to be performed to demonstrate the performance of the formulation. For the American Petroleum Institute or API alone, there's nine engine tests, then there's bench tests from the OEM. And all of that is checked, rechecked, and confirmed independently. And all of this process is done at the testing is done at independent labs. The work is audited to ensure that there's a clear documented paper trail to prove the performance. It's not just taking the additive company or the oil company's word at it. There, there's a significant amount of oversight of the process and the data that's generated. That's a lot of various tests, but oil companies are experts in formulation, and it's not like we're completely reinventing the wheel here. A new generation of engine oil is just an improvement over an existing formulation, so why not just go right into engine testing? For sake of argument, let's say there's three types of bench tests. There's bench tests that I'm going to call development bench tests, and these are used in development work, of course. An example might be um, a seal test screener or a bench top oxidation test or a tribological wear test or a, a motorized head, like they take the head of an engine off 
set up a circulating system for the oil, but instead of driving the, the head with, a, with an engine, you drive it with an electric motor. You might have also uh, like a heated surface deposit test where you're looking at, at deposits on certain metal surfaces. And these bench tests are done because in development for the additive company, they might be looking at 12 new candidates for a detergent. Say they want to construct a new detergent the chemist may be able to generate 12 different variants on that, and they want to check the performance of those. But if you were to run an engine test for heavy-duty diesels, the engine tests are $140,000 to start, and they go up to $200,000 per test, and they might run for 500 hours, which means you would only get one answer a month. <laughs> so it just isn't possible to screen new chemistry with engine testing because you just can't, it costs way too much money and you can't move fast enough. So you'll have a suite of in-house development bench tests that an additive company will use to be able to screen new chemistry. Other bench tests include ones for oil performance by both API and the truck OEM. Bench testing gives the manufacturer very specific feedback and data on a subset of criteria. That kind of data is needed before the oil goes into the engine. Kevin tells us why after a quick word from 1044 sponsor, Chevron Lubricants. Protecting your diesel engine and its after-treatment system has traditionally been a double-edged sword. The same engine oil that is so essential to protecting your engine's internal parts is also responsible for 90% of the ash that is clogging up your DPF and upping your fuel and maintenance costs. Outdated industry thinking still sees a trade-off between engine and emission system protection, and Chevron was tired of it. So they spent a decade of R&D developing a no-compromise formulation. Chevron Lubricants developed a new ultra-low ash diesel engine oil that is specifically designed to combat DPF ash clogging. Delo 600 ADF with Omnimax technology cuts sulfate ash by a whopping 60%, which reduces the rate of DPF clogging and extends DPF service life by two and a half times. And just think what you can do with all the MPGs you're going to add from cutting your number of regens. Bedello 600 ADF isn't just about after treatment. It provides complete protection, extending drain intervals by preventing oil breakdown. Before you had to choose between protecting your engine or your after treatment system, and now you don't. 600 ADF from Dello with Omnimax technology, it's time to kick some ash. In the bench tests that are run for API, you're assessing one specific thing, the foam performance, right? Fleet testing is really different. Fleet testing is done more to look for no harm. So fleet testing will be started. There's a point in development where you have your formulation prototypes put together, and that's where you start running fleet testing because you're looking for no harm. You don't really know what you're looking for. You're just checking to make sure there's no issues. So you'll run a couple of years of this prototype oil in fleet testing one of the things we, we've been testing recently has been much lower viscosity oils. So you'll run, you know, zero W20 oils for a couple hundred thousand miles in fleet testing just to feel confident that 5W30s are going to be okay in, in the real world for, for everybody. So it, it's, a, it's a real different focus that you're looking at. On highway diesel engines continue to evolve. They burn hotter than ever before and they make more horsepower from smaller displacements than previous series models. So how does lab testing keep up with the kind of engine and tech advancements that don't even exist yet? Remember the target date for licensing of PC-12 is late 2027. One of the newer developments with the CK4 category was the MAC T13 oxidation test. Oxidation is becoming a lot more significant because engines are downsizing and they're running hotter. And it's sort of a rule of thumb that for every five degrees increase in temperature, your oxidation rate doubles. And so the, uh, the MAC T13 engine test was developed. This is a 360 hour test and it runs full load at 1500 RPM. So that's over 1600 foot pounds of torque. The oil temperature is elevated to 265 degrees, which normal oil temperature is around 225, 240, something like that. So it runs hot, low speed, full load for 360 hours. It's a pretty severe test. And this test was added into the category and it really drove the need to add additional antioxidant. So that was one upgrade for APICK4. Another 
was the development of API FA4, which is essentially the fuel economy category. And here, what was uh, the intent was to have oils that were at lower high temp, high shear viscosities. So you've got uh, the ability now to blend API compliant oils as 5W30s and 10W30s with low high temp, high shear. Historically, high temp, high shear was always kept relatively high, around four centistokes or so, with a minimum of around 3.5 or 3.7 centistokes, centipoise, sorry. With the FA4 category, you're now able to drop it down to, to 3.2 centipoise. And that doesn't sound like a lot of difference, but it, it can make a significant difference in fuel economy. You know, just due to viscometrics, you can see uh, from a from a 1030 to a 1540, one one to two percent improvement in fuel economy. Which you know, for the fleet, for if you if you got a fleet of trucks, that's that's a lot of fuel. That could really add up. That's it for this week's 1044. You can read more on ccjdigital.com, and as always, you can find the 1044 each week on CCJ's YouTube channel. If you've got questions, comments, criticisms, or feedback, please hit us up at 1044trucking at gmail.com or give us a call at 404-491-1380. Until next week, everybody stay safe.